Hey, it's Tim Terry again, back at Fresno Edge, hanging with Steve Sabonia. Um, last time we talked about the appropriateness of college programs in high schools. Um, you know, we've been kind of a little heavy on the football, so I thought today we'd talk about, you know, volleyball and basketball, because there was that big bubble that came through, you know, probably the last, what, 10, 15 years, the big buzzword out there for any basketball, any court sports been plyometrics. Mm -hmm. And there's a few books written, and everybody got all excited about plyometrics and and not really understanding it. It seemed like a good idea. And every time you talk to any volleyball coach, basketball coach, they say, oh, we got to do a jump program. Because it's been shown in research that if you do a jump program, you can increase vertical. And a big, big part of your sport is vertical, yes. And, yeah, so they get all excited. So, but let's talk about that. Plyometric program, like, first of all, plyometrics, all it means is enacting the stretch reflex, right? And then, so you do something that stretches the muscle and you superimpose a contraction on top of it. Correct. And, and it can be done with any muscle group. And okay. Most commonly used in the jumps. Right. But say for you know, other sports like baseball, tennis, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, we do it rotationally through the trunk right. you know, or, or punching movements. So you just preload it and then... Yeah. Okay. And so as soon as they, that, it, it, that added contraction helps change the direction of, of the force, basically. Okay. So, for example, um, you're going down with a preload to jump up to, for a like, faster the preload, okay. and the, the faster it help, helps the magnitude of the force going up as okay. far as the, the contraction. I hope that doesn't sound too wordy, but <laughs> that's right, basically yeah. what it is. And the, the problem is, is that, um, just like we kind of talked before, the different developmental levels of athletes um, can um, take plyometric training and the loads of plyometric training to, to with different results. Mm -hmm. Meaning a developmental athlete, a very young athlete that has not done a lot of joint stabilization, not a lot of strength training, not a lot of eccentric training especially. Right. Being able to capture a load and control mm -hmm. that, that capture, right. it's very important. And so that person probably needs to do less plyometrics and more of the strength training, eccentric training, joint sta stabilization, so on, just so they can control any type of load. Yeah. Because so the eccentric being the lengthening contraction, right. for those of you out there that are curious about that. So yeah, you have to be able to control that first, the negative contraction is the eccentric. Um, but again, there's levels in plyometrics too, right? Uh -huh. I mean, you pick up those books and you see, and, and everybody, when you think plyometrics, everybody thinks what, what's called it's the depth jump. Uh, but you're jumping off something, hitting the ground, and then jumping. Right. But that is the highest. Oh, that's the highest level. level. Everybody wants to do that. Because right. That's the coolest looking one. You know. Right. Exactly. But yeah, that that there, you're jumping off something. You're adding gravity to your load, right. and changing the direction of, from going down to going up as fast as you can. Right. And when I was talking about that eccentric part, so you're landing going down, that eccentric part is going to be going down, and you're going to be going down faster and harder because now you have gravity making you fall a little right. bit faster, and being able to change that direction, that puts a lot of stress on the ankles, the knees, the hips, and again, back to the developmental athlete, if if you have a volleyball player, which many of them are built like giraffes, they got right. long, long exactly. legs, and if they, say, don't have a strong ability to, to stabilize their core and their hips, their knees are going to be all over the place, mm -hmm. which puts their knees at a disadvantage as far as um, being able to generate forces. Right. They're more going to be absorbing tissue forces. Mm -hmm. And there we go. It's a great way to develop tendonitis issues in the knee. Right. right. And so, we see it a lot in therapy. I mean, again, you hit that, you know, a plyometric program. And I think originally when it was first done by the Russians, right, they, they said, to be able to do it, you should be able to squat twice your body weight or some yeah. ridiculous amount just yeah. so that you knew had that much strength. Yeah. And then we just kind of, you know, we're Americans, we just kind of brush that aside and we'll, we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But boy, I tell you, 12 to 13 year old girls, we see tons of them in therapy for knee pain. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the funny part of it is it's never usually the knee, it's the hips that are weak. So exactly what Steve's saying, they land, they can't control it, their knees collapse in together, all that stress goes through their knees. They show up saying, man, my knees are killing me. But we spend a little time getting rid of the pain in the knees, and we spend a ton of time strengthening up their hips, their abductors. Yep. yep. And then, how many of them actually know how to jump? Yeah. 
I mean, that's the first step of jump training, right? Yeah. I mean, I know you coaches love it, but first thing you need to learn how to jump and yeah. You know, I would the highly strongly recommend, and you know, that, that old theory of, of the du doubles, the body weight squat with the Russians mm -hmm. and so on. It it has kind of been changed more so where they need about three months of base training before they start okay. doing actual jump training and so on. Which in a three month period, good poor, good number of people are going to be able to to get some good strength training right. done. So basically. I always say I teach them to squat first. If they're going to be doing jumping, right. it depends on what type of plyometric. Right. But if it's too jumping, teach them how to squat. Then okay. I teach them how to how to, to how to speed squat, which is kind of a jump out of a squat position. They're going right. down. They're loading with say dumbbells in their hand, mm -hmm. and they're going down a little faster with, with weight, and they come down and up, down okay. and up. But they're not actually jumping off the ground. They come up onto the toes, mm -hmm. and then. I teach them, and, and they're still in good position. Right. And then we teach them how to do a jump squat without any weight added, just their body weight, body weight jump squat. Right. And then maybe jumping onto something. Right. Okay. And then maybe jumping like a re repetitive forward jump, like a repeat broad jump. Okay. You know, there's some progression there that right. you can see. Now we're out, out, obviously starting to add gravity and motion, linear motion, right. vertical motion. So. And I think that's the key with anything, right? We, I know we'd like to go to the high end because it is cool, but you got to follow the progressions. You start, and, and you only progress when the person can do it with good form, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And and with the strength. With all this power stuff, we'll, we'll talk about power in the future. But power, in order to have power, you first got to have strength. No question. So, power is built on or strength. Yeah, power is built on a strength base. Then you put the speed into it. So, we'll cut it off there. Thanks again. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.